Hey everyone, in today's video we'll be solving this problem right here where we're given a unit disk and a point is chosen uniformly at random from that disk and basically we're asked to give the expected value of the distance between the point and the center of the disk. So if you want to give it a go, pause the video and if you're just here for the solution, I'll reveal it right now. Okay, so before we go ahead and solve this problem, let's think a bit about what it actually means to choose a point uniformly at random from the unit disk. If we draw the unit disk right here and draw its center, we can think about a sampling procedure where we pick a radius uh, uniformly at random or just at random. So for each of these radii, uh, we just pick one of them. You know, there's, there's a bunch of radii here. Um, we just pick one of them at random. Let's say we pick this one. And then given that we've chosen that radius, we pick a point uniformly at random on that radius. So, you know, we could pick this one, this one, this one, this one, um, but they all have to be uniformly at random. And since this, the length of this radius is one, since this is a unit disk, uh, this would actually be the same as just sampling from a uniform distribution, uniform from zero to one. However, so, you know, since the expected value of the uniform distribution is one half, we would get that since all these radii are the same, we would get that the expected, the expected distance from the center uh, would be one half. Um, however, this is wrong. This is not the way to choose a point uniformly at random from the unit disk. Um, because the, if you can imagine, these radii should have a little bit of width here. Um, and they should be wider at the, at the end than at the beginning. Um, since, you know, the, if I draw a circle here in the middle, it'll be a lot shorter than if I draw it out here. So we can't really uh, use this sampling procedure to sample a point uniformly at random from the disk. The correct way to sample uniformly at random from this unit disk is if I draw any region in this unit disk, you can imagine any type of region you want. Um, the probability that a point that I choose uniformly at random from this unit disk um, is in that region should be precisely the area of that region divided by the area of the entire unit circle. So, you know, if I if I define this region right here, then I can calculate its area. And since I know that the area of the entire unit disk is pi, since its radius is one, it's just a unit disk. Um, that means that for any of that of such region, the probability that a point is in that region should just be, you know, the area of this divided by pi. So now that we've cleared that up, uh, let's go ahead and solve the problem. Um, and so first, the density function of this uh, uniform sampling from the circle is just given by uh, f of x, or actually, let's, let's denote this f of x, y, um, since there's the x and the y coordinate on the circle. Um, it's just 1 over pi. So when x squared plus y squared uh, is less than or equal to 1. This just means that when x and y are on the circle, um, then the density is 1 over, one over pi, um, and it's actually 0 otherwise. Um, yeah. And so now all we have to do is, since we know that the distance uh, from the center of the circle is just given by uh, the square root of x squared plus y squared, uh, right, by Pythagoras, all we have to do is uh, take the integral over the c um, times the density, uh, c is our circle in this case, um, and then times uh, this de uh, distance function plus y squared. And then we can just say dx dy. Uh, this would actually be like a double integral, um, 1 over x and then 1 over y. Okay, so solving this integral using regular coordinates is actually quite a hassle. Uh, it's pretty difficult, and uh, yeah, we're not going to bother with that. Um, a better way to do this is using polar coordinates. Uh, basically, if you've never dealt with polar coordinates before, uh, you should read up on it. But basically, in a normal integral, uh, we kind of try to divide up this, if this was part of our circle, we try to divide it up into small squares, um, where, you know, the function is defined on any of these squares, and then by evaluating the function on one of these, you know, one of these points in the square and multiplying it by the area of that square, uh, we get an approximation of, of the integral. And by taking these squares to be uh, smaller and smaller, we get better and better approximations of the integral. Um, however, in this case, we're actually going to do in polar coordinates, uh, you, you, you kind of transform your coordinate system um, into angles and radii. And so in this case, our picture would look more like this where we have a bunch of radii here and then a bunch of these like arcs around the circle and the the little boxes that were uh, straight edged before um, they look like this now they're kind of kind of weirdly shaped but if you can imagine like the more if, if these like if these get smaller these areas actually resemble squares more and more 
And so that's the, the idea behind polar coordinates. And so transforming these, ooh, transforming these into polar coordinates, um, there's two, two rules you should know. So basically any X you replace by R cosine theta. Um, if you think about a circle, uh, basically this is the sine of theta and then this is cosine of theta. Um, and then, so multiplying, and this is the radius. And so multiplying uh, R times cosine theta, uh, we just get that this is X and then this is Y. And so that's just why, why you replace it. And then Y is here, it's uh, R sine of theta. Um, and then also dx dy is r dr d theta. Um, so there's another another r in there. Uh, there's actually an explanation from the, for this, which involves like um, how you actually calculate the areas of these these kind of these things. Um, but we're not going to go into that right now. Um, so we can so this integral we can write it as um, the double integral of one over pi. Um, sorry, one over pi. Um, and actually, we can we can already actually yeah no let's um, let's try just write it like this. So x squared gets replaced by r cosine theta. So it's r cosine of theta uh, squared plus uh, r sine of theta squared. So r sine of theta squared. Um, and so let's move this out of the way. This would just be um, r dr d theta here. Um, and since you know if, if you think about the the circle here, um, the radius. Obvi obviously, like all these points here, um, they go from zero to one since the radius goes from zero to one. So this, the bounds of this inner integral uh, would just be zero to one. Whereas theta, theta stands for the angle um, the, that we're integrating. It just goes from zero to two pi. Okay, so this integral looks a lot uh, harder than before, but first of all, we can uh, try to uh, take, take these squares. So this, this inner thing would just be r squared cosine theta squared plus r squared sine theta or sine squared sine squared theta and that's how you write it and then factoring out the r squared we actually get r squared times cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta um, obviously you have the square root here um, but if you remember from your school classes uh, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is just one so this is just the square root of r, r squared uh, which is just r so actually this entire thing just simplifies to r um, this thing simpl simplifies to R. Um, but we can't forget that we still have an R right here. Um, and so multiplying these, those two R's, we get R squared. And we actually still have the one over pi here, but the one over pi gets, uh, we can just take that outside the integral right here. So um, rewriting this, we just get that this is equal to one over pi times the integral from zero to two pi um, of the integral of zero to one of um, R squared. And then we have dr d theta. Okay, and so evaluating this inner integral, we just get um, r to the third over three uh, evaluated at one zero. Well, this is just one over three, um, so we can rewrite one over three. And then we just take this outer integral from zero to two pi um, of d theta, and then let's not forget the one over pi out here. Um, and so this would just be uh, one over three uh, evaluated at, or sorry, one over three theta evaluated at two pi and zero. So this, this would just be two pi over three. Okay, and so let's not forget the one over pi uh, out front. So if we multiply one over pi by two pi over three, uh, we just get that the answer is to this whole integral uh, two over three since the pi's cancel out. So um, to sum up the expected value or the expected value of the distance between the point and the center of the disc is just two over three. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that problem, and if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.